is connected. I can see Pompey is connected online. Karan, I can't hear you. <laughs> Karan, speak louder, Karan. Like, yeah, God, we should have just done this live last night. I know. Can you hear me now? Yeah, very faintly, I can. I think one second. Is there something? One second. Just one second. Wait. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying everything. Okay. Are you hearing me without? Can you hear me now like this? Yeah, I can. Put your volume a little up because. I my volume is at max now. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Huh? Yeah, I can, I can hear you a bit. So. But why is there something happening at your end? Because I've I've done lives like this and everybody's been able to hear me audibly all the time. I have no idea because from here we can hear. Is it the is it a poor connection? But anyway, now we're live. We should have just done this yesterday. Yeah, it but now easier. Is it totally audible to you. Am I low? Am I high? What is the sound quality like? Low, low. But now, is it low for everybody, guys? All the comments coming in. Can you tell us that uh, am I audible? Is Karina audible? Okay, so I can hear. We can hear you both. Okay, in the UK, they are saying. Well, Karina, okay, so trust you to be audible in the UK. <laughs> exactly, but I. I no, we could. It's I perfect now. Andy Sequera says it's perfect. All right, beautifully. All right, okay. So, तैयार हैं आप? Are you ready, Karina? Can we start? Yes, I'm ready, and thank you so much because the book is even more special because it has uh, you who are you know launching it with me today, which I think is I I when Shiki asked me who I wanted and what would I said if I actually want to just launch this book with Karan because he's a brother and I think it would be perfect. He's like my family, and having his voice behind my book, it would just be it would make my day. Well, I am really excited, honored, and full of love right now, and I can't believe that you've been brave enough to actually write this pregnancy bible. So, <laughs> I really want to address that right at the top with you, Karina, is because it takes a lot. It takes a lot uh, for anyone, and even a woman, to kind of tell a tell-all book on pregnancy. So, what was that one aspect, or rather, that one moment that motivated you to actually go ahead and give the green signal to this book? I think when I when Chicky called me, in fact, it took me fifteen minutes to actually just tell her that you know I want I want to do it and I'm going to do it. And I said that you know the only way I'm going to do this is if I'm allowed to be honest. And she was like, I'm actually shocked that you know um, you being a celebrity, would you actually be honest enough to talk about certain things? I said, if the book is going to allow me to do that, I want to do it because there's no other way. I don't know any other way but to. Just you know, you know how I am. I speak from my heart, and that's exactly what I've done through Tim and Jay's pregnancies. I mean, I think it's just like I've, I've, yeah, I've said we've spoken and touched about topics that probably, you know, a lot of mothers and expecting mothers won't want to address. You know, Karan. Karina, I'm sorry to disturb you. Everyone saying there's an echo coming from your end. Is there a device right next to you that you can? There's an echo coming from your end. Echo to my end. Is there there's an, an echo, echo somehow? End. All the comments are saying there's an check, echo. Check. Karina, a lot of echo. All the comments are saying a lot of echo. Your voice oh, is not. And my voice is echoing. And because uh, should I wear my AirPods? Is Karina it the problem with your voice? Mine is coming to everybody. Problem with saying, my voice. Let's try try AirPods. AirPods. Try your AirPods. Yeah, just try. Let's switch on the airport. We are fine for it. We can hear. 
Is it better? Can is guys? Is it better now? Can are you hearing Karina more clear without I the echo? I think this is better. I Karan can hear is you fine. clearer now. Somebody saying la. Okay. Ah. Uh, is everyone finding Karina audible, guys? Just wanted your feedback. I think. Somebody saying voice आ रही है दोनों की proper. Voice आ रही है पढ़ लिया आपने ये? हाँ मैंने पढ़ लिया क्या आ रही है? हाँ करण वॉइस एंड कनेक्शन इज प्रॉपर हाई गोर्जस फ्रॉम ट्रिनेडेड ओके आई डोंट नो आई थिंक शी प्रॉब्लम मेंट यू यस पॉम्पी इज सेइंग इट्स ओके नाउ पॉम्पी सेइंग इट्स ओके पॉम्पी पॉम्पी इज टोल्ड अस ऑल राइट टू कॉन्टेक्स what karina really yeah, said yeah, that yeah. she would only want to write this book if she was actually allowed to be completely bone honest which from what i've read karina you have been uh yeah. it it takes a lot of guts and a lot of gumption to actually write yeah. a tell all book and i'm actually glad that you did because it's immensely informative and very motivating to so many millions of women who are going to read it Now Absolutely. I mean, I'm going to actually jump right into it Bebo because I think uh it's important that we get to the crux of the matter. When there is um uh, uh firstly you've had two bonafide beautiful children and uh, what I admired the most about you especially when it came to uh your second child are we allowed to mention his name out in the public domain now can we say that you call him what you call him? Yeah, Jay Ali Khan. Okay, Jay Ali Khan. So when Jay was born, uh, the one moment that I really felt very proud of you is that you worked right through your second trimester, right through. You shot Lal Singh yeah. Chadda in the peak of your pregnancy in your eighth month. Yeah, I did a romantic <laughs> song with Amir Khan, like five and a half months pregnant. <laughs> Eight months into your pregnancy, maybe even beyond that, you were on sets. You were doing endorsements. You were finishing your film projects. You were doing yeah. everything. And I think that's one thing that you broke a myth. You know, because everyone is so paranoid during you know a, a pregnancy at home. Couples yeah. that are pregnant are always paranoid. Ye mat karo, wo mat karo. So many do's and don'ts. You kind of course. broke the shackles of all those myths. What is I mean what gave you the confidence to do that was it your family or was it you yourself I think of course it was me wanting to actually just you know be happy and work and when I'm working when I'm out and about when I'm uh doing things that I love I think I'm the happiest and of course a lot of support from from self I think uh, what is most important when you're pregnant and jab uh you know when you, of course you're going to become a mother i think what a pregnant woman really wants to hear is come words of comfort and encouragement from her spouse i think she wants her husband to make her feel uh loved happy safe and uh i think that's what you know self exactly made me feel and he allowed me to do that and i think most wives and mothers Uh, expecting mothers should make sure that their husbands give them ample love and comfort and that's most important because and not to treat you like you're a patient you're pregnant exactly. you're not yeah, a patient yeah allow you to do what you want to do you know yes. that's most important and like that's what i told everyone that you know i'm not ill i'm not sick of course we're living in covid when i was pregnant with jay it was covid times with all safety protocols we kind of you know managed to do a lot of shoots and it was you know it was it kept me uh, it kept me alive it kept me you know happy in times that were so difficult but of course there was that constant fear that you know what is going to happen uh, what if i get covid will my child get covid so it was it, it i mean there was a lot of trauma in the last trimester i would say in my mind mentally you know of right. wanting to step out and do things but still So but like you said you know family support and um, and you know me I'm I'm no guts no glory that's the kind of girl yes. I am Yeah Well yeah that you have shown in abundance as an actor Now there are so many of us I mean especially men who are so ignorant about what a woman goes through during pregnancy I mean you know someone like me a little more aware little more i would say tuned in to a uh, a woman's emotional needs requirements and insecurities because i've had very open conversations with women and really regard uh, their opinions on it 
what you did in the film good news the scene that you actually spoke about ironically um is very close to so many of the aspects that your book covers when you tell yeah. the character in the film akshay's character in the film about like you don't know anything that a woman goes through you know you know exactly. you really go there are mood swings your body changes you you can't eat what you need to like everything there's swelling in your feet yeah. and your everything your body just goes through a metamorphosis um yeah. when you talk about those things and i don't address this to you as an artist as an actor karina i tell you this as art, address this as a woman um when you stare at yourself and see your body change when you have when literally when you know you you are staring at yourself you know in the mirror with 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 the way the body evolves and changes during a pregnancy what does that make you feel and what is your my second question to that is what is your advice to women out there who go through those deep rooted insecurities staring at themselves in the mirror during their pregnancy moments i've i've had those moments um uh, especially in with my second pregnancy i think when i came back from the hospital and i looked at myself in the mirror i i i thought that okay this is you know i don't know if i'm ever going to be able to like you know be okay and being an actor i you do have a part of you not that it's it's not vanity it's about you know want wanting to just you know feel like okay fine you know i'm fit and i can be back again on my toes i thought i'll never be able to like i was like you know there was obviously fear of breastfeeding that you know because i wasn't getting enough when i when i delivered jay so there was a lot of mental distress that i was going through at that time right. then i felt like my body had stretched my feet were feeling like uh like 100 kg like i felt like oh my god because this pregnancy current was very difficult compared to temurs temurs was a breeze you know i loved it i enjoyed it and that right. actually gave me the courage to do it again but this time was very very difficult and i mean i had more bouts of you know where i would probably just like you know sit down on the in, you know on the pot and be like i don't think this that you know i can do this so i don't think you know every anything is going to be okay and obviously it's also like i feel expect mother mothers who deliver after you know when you deliver i think the first 15 20 days there's not enough sleep you don't know it's also like you're delirious you don't really know exactly what's happening you know because right. there's just so much pressure and so when you get that moment alone in the bathroom and you look at yourself i think you just think that okay i don't know what's going to happen but you know of course as time goes on and you know you have love and support and help like you know whether for mum lolo self everyone i think you know then it just gets better and better and when you look at you know your son or daughter and you you know have that moment of just you know your child and you i think it just changes everything there's a uh, sorry to again stop you again there's talk about an echo everyone is again commenting on an echo that is coming from your end again an echo i'm reading bebo echo bebo echo <laughs> Oh god but now i can hear you and like my i mean very clearly i'm actually you're very audible to me uh is the echo karina's voice is cracking can't hear karina probably um guy, at your end is there anyone who can address this echo situation or should we just continue why is there an echo coming in do you want to check now somebody's telling me to where the i airports somebody saying no echo karan Echo. I am only reading echo. Something is fine. No, it's not. Okay. Should we just continue then and hope people can hear us? But there is echo. Is it just? Can you all check? If you all, if you all. It's fine from it's, both ends now. Some Tanji Parora has said it's fine. It's fine. No echo. And someone has just abused me and said there's no echo. But it's all okay. <laughs> I'm used to that. All right. So Karina, back. to uh your feelings of insecurity and how you felt so were there moments where there were lots of breakdowns like there were like breakdowns did you feel like a little emotionally battered in moments as well you found yourself weak and crying and like lost in this process yeah i think so because this like i said you know the second time when i delivered jay was in february i was worried that i was going into a hospital um, yeah. you know i was like what's going to happen in you know the ot is it going to be okay because you were hearing so many stories constantly you know in covid times and it was the peak of covid um 
just that worry of even carrying him out for the first time out of the hospital it was just overwhelming to know that yeah. you know is, is it okay you know i mean we can be masked he can't be masked what is it is everything going to be fine so i think it was all of that combination and a lot of issues that we forget is that after delivery we obviously everyone's focused on the child everyone's focused on the baby but i feel that the most important person is the mother we need to actually she needs the most support which yes. i think people you know tend to forget whether it's friends or family they're just excited in looking at the baby and you know wow amazing but no one's looking at us so i think that is something that fathers and family shouldn't forget now you basically also uh, karina not just because you know you're in the business of entertainment but you also took the guidance of rujuta your dietitian as well as namrata purohit your you yeah. know uh, with the exercise routine would you advise women to actually go down the process of actually bringing on a dietitian a nutritionist as well as someone who can actually make you a pregnancy exercise regime like you of course had two very strong uh pillars biocide in rujuta and namrata pro yeah yeah to recommend this to all women to go down like having a routine so that you can I actually think if you have access to to it i think it's amazing because even even if you don't have for mothers who can't like you know i mean working mothers or you don't have time and you know you're working and still pregnant i think just even the, the idea of being active an idea of taking a walk for 30 minutes a day it can change your mood it can change the way you feel uh, right. you know it's not just about maintaining the weight it's also about you know just staying fit and healthy you know and of course rujuta has always been somebody who has you know always spoken about the fact of eating healthy eating local eating organic she's always been like that right so following her has always been an easy it's a part of my life you know it's just something that i i enjoy doing and i think mothers you know should just continue enjoying their life and you know of course cravings and all that happens but uh, yeah. i mean you know as long as you can be fit try to be as much as you can i think that it really really helps what about what about pregnancy blues karina what how did you address those days where there were downer days there were those what we call quintessentially as pregnancy blues how did you address those days what is was it also family support love and care or just distance from everyone how did you address it uh you know it's not like it's just pregnancy blues in the first i think they're there they last the entire year you know it's not like like now every day is like amazing even now i mean you know there are days of fear so you know that's just that's just the way i feel you know but i i i try i try to push myself i'm the kind of person that you know likes to get out of the situation and take that challenge that's just the way you know i am as a person as everybody knows so even if i'm down or even if i'm feeling like you know i'm tired or i can't do this anymore you know i obviously think of you know happier things i think of happier times i think of you know jay sleeping i look at him and and i'm like okay you know everything is worth it everything will be worth it right and, you know i mean i'm mean, still i still do that and i miss him like sometimes now when i go to work also even now mothers have constant guilt it's just a guilt syndrome that all mothers will you know they just have it you know they constantly feel that even if you are at work oh my god i'm missing out on that one moment uh you know i i want to be there for everything i i just want to say that you know if you're not happy your child can't be happy so yes. that we should there, there should never be any guilt about that well said about that well said what was interesting for me that you used some home grown remedies for like spotting you used toothpaste it was of course a home grown <laughs> remedy uh was that babita aunty's little trick to you or is it something that you learnt on the way I think it's it was actually it was actually my grandmother's in the book like when you read the book there are a lot of things that actually my dadi ji used to keep saying you know right. ki ye karna chahiye wo karna chahiye and that's what i think all of everyone has followed over the generations in the family also right like whether it was making the laddu so that you know if you as they call the, them they call them the grandmother's tricks yeah grandmother's trick the gond ke laddus that you know or khao so you know obviously breast feeding becomes easier right so a lot of modern mothers are like no no don't but you know these old wives tales as they say and the grandmother hacks 
I think they completely work, and I followed it by the book as to what she said. Breastfeeding. There's a constant um, conjecture that surrounds breastfeeding. You know, how many months do you breastfeed? What if you can't breastfeed? What is the guilt attached to not breastfeeding? And I know that one of your final comments in the book is that it's okay for technical reasons, emotional reasons, medical reasons. If you can't breastfeed, you can't take that guilt on. What would you like to tell women about all these speculations and traumas that surround breastfeeding? You know, the idea is, of course, that because there is so much societal pressure that you know this yes. is the way it has to be done, or you know this is what it is. I I just feel that each mother there's no crown for wearing the best mother in the world. Every mother is the best mother in the world. The fact yes. that you've given birth to another human being and you've had the ability and the capability of doing that then you're the best mother in the world there's no formula that okay you have to breastfeed for a certain time of course 6 months is what they say is ideal right you, to go up to you know almost a year and a half i mean if you get that kind of milk it would be amazing right. but some mothers and some women due to hormonal reasons it could be anything thyroid it could be you know mental state of mind they don't get enough milk you know sometimes if you have to do an emergency cesarean and you know uh, a c section it takes time for the milk to come because when you're in a normal delivery they say it comes faster that's what they say but when you operate it takes time so yes. mothers have to have the patience to see that through so i just feel that you know just do the best you can what works yes. for each for each woman at each, that point in time each time. mother has a separate circumstance and i think yeah. whether it's professional personal medical emotional it Absolutely. has to be addressed accordingly and what i love is that no one is giving you an award there should not be yeah. guilt attached to it because there it's your personal circumstance and it it's, doesn't make your it doesn't make you love your child less but of course i feel if you have if you're getting milk and if you can and you have the time you have the ability to do it i think it's it's the best feeling in the world because it actually gives you that feeling of bonding with your child yes. and what watching your child it's a mother it's a mother child moment but you know there are millions around the world you know like you know who can't do it and you know like today i mean people families of the surrogacy families different kind of situation circumstances you know that you you're in one yes. you have your two lovely children but it doesn't make you love your child any less you should in fact, any less i just feel you know i used to have this guilt as a parent uh that i hadn't done any of the emotional and physical heavy lifting and does that make me a lesser of a parent and eventually Absolutely. i realized that the love that you can surround your children by is really what parenting is all about love understanding and compassion is what you need to give your children um i Absolutely. kept thinking, i'm a single parent and i didn't go through those processes that all women have had to go through and yet i had the two beautiful bonnie babies by my side so i do get yeah. saying that it's so individual yeah. everyone's decision where it comes to pregnancy um Absolutely. you know Absolutely Karina mental health is such a discussion of relevance importance and sensitivity and discussing it is really something that we have to do with utmost sensitivity and compassion um postpartum depression is something that many many women have gone through and not been able to comprehend understand um there are of course metabolic changes there are hormonal changes yeah. and that results sometimes in postpartum depression um did you individually go through that phase and if yes uh, how did you deal with it and if not what would your advice be i think uh, sometimes mothers even while they're in their last trimester experience you know a lot of anxiety and depression because you know you're about to deliver the baby you're getting prepared for a new arrival into your life how are you going to react uh you know so it starts i think in the last trimester a lot of a lot of us go through that and yeah. post like i said it it can last 6 months it can last a year correct uh, and you know like like i said sometimes even now i feel overwhelmed you know i mean like i think that okay i've gone through two pregnancies i have two children like how is it going to be even though i know it's it's the most normal thing my sister i mean you know i've seen my sister i've seen it but yeah. i i know like but still it's just it's just a thought sometimes that you know kind of scares you that you know how is this journey going to be and am i going to be good at it or is everything going to be okay 
uh, but like i said you know friends and and my family and just i constantly keep surrounding myself with people and you know i just being positive you know me i'm very very positive yes. and very always positive. optimistic positive and always looking at the bright side of things if exactly so that's the only way to you know kind of be and surround this. yourself with people like that the other thing that there is always bits that surround and women feel the guilt when they have to opt for a c section a cesarean yeah. uh, as opposed to a normal delivery uh there are always thing told to you by old grandmother tales like we are saying again you know where uh, you say that you know going through the beats of actually having a normal delivery is what really um, satiates a mother it's when you really feel attached to your child but again there are medical circumstances again there are there are issues that crop up and uh, you've had two cesareans two c sections and i know that the very first one you weren't happy with but it was medically advised you to go down that path uh your book states that speaks about the cesarean trauma um that you went through now what would you tell women when they actually are confronted with this cesarean situation and they actually bear that guilt that am i not going to feel that umbilical god connection if i don't have a normal delivery again i think it's the societal pressure and this taboo that okay this is the way it is you can't have a cesarean of course everyone wants to go through uh you know a normal delivery no woman wants to you know cut 35 layers into her body and do it i think that you know sometimes circumstances you know just you know there are situations that take place for that but i i i don't see the guilt you know about it there's there's yes. there can never be guilt the idea is that however it is my child comes into my arms and when that minute they you know give you your child in your arms i think everything just everything vanishes everything and vanished. in fact it's just the idea is that every mother should in fact have a choice to opt for however they want you know the however they're comfortable with right you know exactly not just of course sometimes they have to do an emergency cesarean like we had to do in the first one for my first yes. one with them so i think sometimes you know i mean even now i think parents should the mother should be given the choice as to how she wants and how she feels the other thing your book very bravely and i say brave only because of the environment sometimes we are surrounded by where they talk about sex as a taboo topic um right. pregnancy and sex um and your regular sex life is always uh, addressed and it's like many women like it's off limits for so many women uh in the 9 months drain that they go through in the 9 months duration of their pregnancy you yourself spoke about how you lost your sex drive and you know your husband was very um understanding through those days now what is it the notions that surround a sex life during a woman's pregnancy and and then what does a woman feel herself can you expand on that and express to everyone watching today you know i think that again people just feel like okay i mean you know if when you're pregnant they don't realize the kind of like you said you know moods emotions feelings what you actually feel about yourself you know that's so important right some days i would feel super like amazing and sexy and feel like oh my god i'm looking so you know like hot with this belly yeah. and i feel amazing and like you know i would tell self that that you know i'm right. feeling really amazing or or he would say you know like you're looking beautiful but there were times like in you know post like six seven months where i felt like like i of course i was exhausted and i couldn't get myself you know to like get yeah. up sometimes in the morning yeah. but sometimes you're just like you know I, it's just just a feeling of repulsion you know you're just like yes. in a mental state where you just you know don't know what to think right and it's so like i said it's so important to have a supportive man and yes. most men should not put pressure on their wives to a yeah. look beautiful while they're pregnant yes. b feel they're any less yes. than you know exactly. like they're not pregnant that pressure shouldn't be there or the fact that you know this is it and our regular sex life has to be completely like super active it's it it has to be according to the way what the woman feels right. and what she's feeling at that minute and right. if your husband doesn't understand that then how can he be the father of your child how can he probably not i mean you know he has to love you in every form aspect every way so yeah. i i just feel that you know it also it's a topic that probably you know i've written in the book because most women feel scared to talk about it yes yes you know they no. don't or embarrassed to address it here's what really really impressed me about the book is that i think for the first time 
um, in a very long time, I read, I've read autobiographies that have been brave. I had people, you know, talk about their lives in their memoirs. But I think it's very critical. It's very critical for men and women to read your pregnancy Bible because it really takes you through a journey. And it's a very inclusive journey. And that's what I loved most about it because I felt like it gave me as a reader, a viewer into your pregnancy durations for both your babies. Uh, it yeah. talked about your highs, your lows, your mid levels of, of emotion. It talked about your fears, your insecurities and your happiness and joy as well. There's a lot of joy in the book. There's so much joy, yeah. but there's also those deep, dark areas that women go through. And from what mm -hmm. I understand, Karina, what you're basically the crux of what you've told us so beautifully um, is that it's so individualistic and every decision has to be yours because you are the master and mistress of that decision. You know, whether yeah. it comes to your breastfeeding, it comes to your personal sex life, it comes to your decision to opt for a cesarean or not, whether it's advised or not by the doctor, it's your own. Whether you choose to be active, you choose to be inactive, you choose to, I mean, you can only say like, yes, you recommend a dietitian. Yes, you recommend a trainer. But if you can't for various reasons not, not have those at by your side, yeah. then you have to do what's best for yourself. And, lot, and what, you, what my last question really in this turf is like, how do you block all the noises? Because there is, everybody has advice to give when it comes to pregnancy. You know, yeah. it's your family, your friends, everybody will tell you how to, how to handle this or handle that. Do this, do that, go there, go there. How do you block that noise and do your own thing? How does Karina Kapoor Khan do that? I think that, you know, I mean, I am the kind of person that anyway, I think, you know, I listen to everybody and I take it out from the other ear. So no sati karo up. Huh. That is the way I, I live my life. I've, I, I've done that even when everyone was like, like, oh my God, why are you doing this? Why are you getting married? Or why are you doing this? Why are you like, even, oh my God, now she's going to have another baby, then another baby. And, and you know me, I just hear everybody and I'm just like, okay, this is it. I want to do what I want to do. And I think every woman, pregnant or not pregnant, should think in this way. Of course, it's a pregnancy Bible, but I also believe that even post delivery every woman should she should just be the way she wants to be guilt free yes. breastfeeding like you addressed going to work which even yes. I go through I think it should just just be fearless because that's be the way fearless. I am and I've lived my life and I'm sorry I said that was the last question but I'm intrigued about one piece of advice that I'd like you to give to um, women in your fraternity in your entertainment industry Myths that tell you that, you know, pregnancy, being married, you've broken all those shackles. You're a massive movie star today. At age 40, you own your career. You own your life. You're a movie star. You have two children. You have a satiated personal life and an absolutely fantastic professional existence. You're shooting some of the biggest movies in the business as you speak. Mother of two, how would you like to talk to the women in your industry and say that please do not conform to these myths that say marriage is the end of the road, pregnancy is the end of the road, having children means you won't get certain kinds of roles. Just talk about how there's a plethora of entertainment work that's coming to so many solid actors and they shouldn't be pressurized by these so-called myths that surround us. I think that, you know, when I got married about 10 years ago, almost a decade ago, at that time, everyone was like, career's over, career's khatam ho jayega, kuch nahi milega, ye, wo, and you know, the typical things. But I think, you know, you being a filmmaker, cinema is changing today. Yes. Actors, I mean, today, every possible, I mean, the best of actresses are married, whether it's Deepika Padukone or then Vidya Balan. I think everybody, and I think they all have, you know, followed suit, followed their heart and are, you know, flying. And filmmakers are, you know, being brave enough to make films the way, you know, whether it's Shakun and you making a film with yes. Deepika, whether a film like Sherni today being made or Amir Khan casting me in Lal Singh Jada. I think that it's very, very brave of filmmakers to be giving us married women. I don't even call it bravery, up. Karina. I just think yeah. solid actors need to constantly work and do solid roles. Whether Absolutely. they are married, pregnant, mothers, how should that matter? It I'm happy that at all. you know, a mainstream filmmaker like you is thinking like that. Because yeah. that's just the way it is, you know. I mean, otherwise, I mean, please, yeah, we can't even call it cinema then. I'm so, I'm happy that, you know, where this is where we are today. 
Well, I'm going to end with three very quick rapid fire questions because how could we not be on the hot seat with you? Uh, but very simple, family, pregnancy. But no hamper. <laughs> There's no hamper this time. Well, the hampers, all the love you're getting in all the comments, I can see it's the abundant love. Uh, very quickly, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to say it's a bit of a well, it's it's not a good choice to give any 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 mother, but a romantic date with Seth by the mountains with a glass of wine, or an, a play date with your two children. What is your big preference <laughs> after a hard day's work? Oh God, what is my preference after a hard day's work? Oh, guilty, not guilty. It's a tough one, Karan, because I'm very selfish and and I and I love my time with Sir. And if yeah. I don't get my time with Sir, I won't be good to the babies because then I'll be well, like, that. you know, I want to be. So I I think a a half an hour with Sir and then one and a half hours with the babies. Okay, fantastic. I love that. Also, whose advice do you listen to much more, your mother's or your sister's? <laughs> oh, well, I think I mean, like, yeah, my sister is. I mean, you know, we're like, you know, we're actually. She's like your one, pillar. So. She's your big, yeah. strong pillar. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's not possible. I can't think beyond her. All right. Okay. Fantastic. One thing that during your pregnancy you loved about Seth. And one thing you did not like about him. Oh God! One, I I loved everything about the time with Seth because we were in a lockdown and I got him completely to myself. Yeah. And which was amazing because we got a lot of time together. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I hated then when like if he had to travel and go away and I would be alone and you yeah. know there would be like times that yeah I would just feel a little lost. And yeah. I didn't even want to like go out and meet family or friends, and I would be like, you know, just lying in bed alone. And I would like, I would think about him. So I would hate it that that you know he wouldn't be there. And then sometimes I would fight with him. So I regret that. And what was your guilty pleasure during your two pregnancies, or were there different guilty pleasures? Guilty pleasure, I think it was all over Instagram, and it's pepperoni pizza. I'm obsessed. <laughs> you know that I'm obsessed with pizza. All right. So pizza was the guilty pleasure during your pregnancy. It still well, is a guilty pleasure. Well, Karina Kapoor Khan, I am so proud of you. Thank the you. Karina Kapoor Khan's pregnancy bible, the ultimate manual for moms to be. I believe it is by Jagannath Books, uh, written with Aditi Shah Bhimjiani. I really yeah. think that um, hats off to Jagannath Books to Chiki Sarkar for actually even coming out with this fantastic idea to tell. This story through you and I your experiences, know. and I think every woman, every man, and I don't make this about women because I think men need to read about pregnancy much more than women do. Much because more. Their level of compassion really has to be at an all-time high where it comes to their wives, their spouses, their girlfriends, their partners' pregnancy. So I mean, I salute you, and I think um, everyone out there, the brave Karina Kapoor Khan, who has actually broken myths. Broken shackles, emerges victorious, maintains her superstar status, and <laughs> yet has has maintains a solid role as a mother, as a daughter, as a wife. Uh, Karina Kapoor Khan, it was an absolute pleasure to do this Insta Live with you. We have yes, uh, we are, uh, uh, we actually have so many questions. I wish we could take just one or two very quickly from the audience. Guys, you have a question. This is your last chance. We're going to actually <laughs> ask you. Uh, uh, just take. I'm only getting lots of love coming your way, Babo. Just love yes. hearts emojis. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, they're all. <laughs> Babo, you look so cute. I mean, you're not cute. You're gorgeous. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyone has a question? Anyone in the house who has a question to ask Karina Kapoor? Oh, somebody just said Sher Shah will be a blockbuster. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, skin. Somebody is asking for skincare tips. Do you have any skincare tips? Skincare tips? Uh, well, I think uh, my mom has wonderful skin, so I'm quite like I think I'm. Kureshi S. Kureshi S. wants to know about skincare tips. Skincare tips. I drink lots of water. I drink three liters of water a day. Uh, yeah, lots of yoga and uh, almond oil. Almond oil. Okay, fantastic. How do you stay positive? Is the last question. It has come from Rashi. That's world is the handle. Rashi wants to know how do you stay positive. I think that you know I I derive positivity from surrounding myself with a lot of positive people around me, and not focus on 
the trolls not focus on negative people like i just you know i just shut my door they like they don't exist for me and i think that makes me really happy so yeah i'm around happy people and sorry the last question from shikha smother is like how do you deal with weight gain weight gain post pregnancy which also happens did that happen of to you of course yes i mean i put on 26 kgs and i'm still on my way to getting fit but yeah i mean i think i go back i you know you try to take out at least 40 minutes four times a week and squeeze in a little bit of a nice workout and don't push yourself too hard i think that is key and give it some time because you know if it takes 9 months to make a baby and you know stretch the body it will also take 9 months to one year to get back so easy on yourself all right fantastic babo thank you so much and i beseech everyone i'm going to say this again make this yet <laughs> another flash for the karina kapoor pregnancy bible karina kapoor khan's pregnancy bible jagannath books well done chiki sarkar and thank you to the team and also to your co writer aditi shah bhimjani yes. who actually helped being you being the voice of reason together. and the voice behind this book aditi was actually the voice behind the book and she's i mean you know a heartfelt thank you to her for actually you know putting this whole thing together for us thank you aditi thank you jagannath and most importantly thank you karina Thank you so Thank much you, to all Karan, the thousands of fans and it, and I love you too. And uh we will now chat on the phone right after this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Karan. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you. This live is gone on. Oh.